Hey and welcome back. I'm about to go to the Pensacola Makers Fair and one of the things I'm going to bring there is a QCW or quasi-continuous wave Tesla coil. Now I have built a few of these in the past and I've also posted some videos on it and uh, those coils were made by taking a, res a regular DRSST Tesla coil and running a ramped um, DC input directly into the coil. And that was achieved by taking a unit such as this, which is basically an Arduino inside a metal box that is programmed to output a, a, a PWM that can be converted into a ramp. And let me just show you the theory. And I have introduced something like this before, but anyway, you take your ramp from your, from your Arduino, that's the ramp, and that is fed directly into a buck driver, um, which is here, this is a buck. Uh, and so it's fed into an opto uh, isolator, which then runs a asynchronous buck which puts out ramp to DC, which goes to the DRSSTC. And I missed out the step in the middle because I could never really get that to work right. And one of the issues I was dealing with in getting that to work right was I was basically using perf board to construct my uh, circuit with a lot of uh, stray inductance on the circuit board. And so I, I wanted to get it much more compact so I put this um, PCB together, which has basically low notions buck verter or buck modulator and using a fast uh, comparator. Let me see if I can mag in on it. There it is right there. The 1719, that's, that's pretty fast. And uh, using that comparator to run this thing. A Couple of minor changes, but basically it's the same circuit. To see if I can get a better quality uh, ramp. So far though, without using that, I've gotten some pretty good ramps and some pretty long arcs up to about five feet in length. But to go beyond that, I think you need to use this, this buck modulator circuit. So that's what all this, this mess is on this table. So, um, so what, I'm gonna, what I'm showing you on the table is you take your ramp signal from your Arduino, your ramp, you feed it into an optical receiver on the buck verter or buck modulator. The buck modulator senses the ramp voltage on the asynchronous buck, which is this BD here. And then that ramp voltage is fed back into the buck modulator. And one of the things that's really important is to have ferrite on the plus lead of your feedback and also to keep the lead short. So you need some ferrite, some um, uh, high permeability ferrite on your feedback lead to try and get rid of some of the noise that you would get in this feedback loop. And that's exactly what I've done here. I put a big chunk of ferrite right there and right next to the board. So it's very close to where the input is to get rid of any stray noise that would mess up the uh, the feedback loop. Now, that modulated ramp from here is then fed right into the Tesla coil. It shouldn't be from there, it's the output of the asynchronous buck that's fed into the that's the direction of feedback. Not there, but here. And then the output then goes to your load, which is the, the uh, double resonant Tesla core. So this is actually correct. So now let's go through the individual components. So here I have a variac. This variac is connected to an isolation transformer down there. So this feeds uh, AC voltage into this voltage doubler is then fed into this circuit here. It consists of an inductor, a capacitor, this happens to be a ceiling fan capacitor rated for about 
450 volts AC. That has a resistor across it, 3.7K power resistor. Then I'm using this broken uh, brick. This is a uh, SKM 100 GB brick that's uh, blown, but, uh, but the diode, the body diodes are still working. So I'm using the diode out of this. Then here's my switch, which is a working SKM uh, 100 GB to feed the ramp into. Now the ramp, let me show where that comes from. So the ramp comes from here, goes through this optical fiber. It then goes into the optical receiver of the buck circuit. The output from this buck modulator then goes to this and drives this opto-isolator chip. This board is much bigger because it's got multiple functions. I can do different things with this particular board, but it feeds this opto-isolator opto chip, which puts out about 2.5 amps into the gates of this. The, modulated, uh, the PWM modulated signal is converted by this in, and this LC circuit here into a ramp. And a good way of drawing the LC circuit, the asynchronous buck circuit is something like this. So you've got your, your power here. Then the SKM 100 GB transistor is this switch here. And now just imagine the switch is open for now that this is fed into an inductor and then it's then fed into a capacitor. Now, you can imagine when the switch closes, that part of the capacitor is gonna become plus and um, the other side is gonna become minus. But, you want to build up charge on this capacitor and keep it flowing. Simply closing the switch will temporarily charge this up, but it won't provide a continuous uh, stable source of power. So in order to do that, you want to put a diode right here. And that's what I'm doing with that broken SKM um, uh, IGBT. So basically what happens is your positive charge, when this switch is closed, goes through the inductor, the magnetic field in the inductor builds up, this side charges up positive. When the, this, this is all happening when the switch is closed. Then when the switch opens, the magnetic field on this collapses, then the negative charge goes through this diode and charges that side uh, negative. And this happens thousands of times per second as this switch is open and closed. So that's the basic premise of this bug. And that is what's happening right here. If you feed a, a ramped PWM here, like this, something like that, the voltage as it builds up across this capacitor will look something like this. Uh, so you're going to get a, a ramped curve and that ramped uh, bus voltage on your double resonant Tesla coil is going to provide sword arcs. So now I'm going to operate this thing. So our Varic is turned totally off. We're going to turn on the pulse signal from here. And we're going to look at the ramp. And what I'm doing is I'm scoping across this capacitor. And I have a bleed resistor on that capacitor. So in between each ramped pulse, all of the charge on that cap is drained off. And a 3.7K resistor, power resistor, is enough to drain off the charge in between each volley. So now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the voltage on this Variac here, so I'm just going to slowly turn it up and I'm going to show you the scope. So there's the beginning of our ramp. You can see the upslope here. And as I increase the voltage on the Variac, it should keep that slope. So this is how it would work with feedback. 
This is exactly how it should look. You can hear that variant kind of pulsing because it's draining. You can see how the voltage is draining simply because the capacitor reservoir is not very big. And so with each pulse through this large heating wire, this heating wire here is the load, and I can already feel heat coming off of that. That will drain off a good chunk of the charge on those capacitors with each pulse. And that's why the voltage is swinging like that. And why you can hear that noise. Now we're gonna turn it up. We're already at 196 volts. We're gonna increase it further. The noise is much louder. Now it's getting quiet. And I'm near to um, 316 volts. Let me show you what this ramp looks like. I'm gonna expand it out a little bit. So there it is. Now, if I change this scale on this thing, I should be able to bring that in a little bit. You can go all the way in on that ramp. We'll go all the way out. There's a little bit of noise at the top of that ramp because it, the, the capacitor is running out of juice and you can't supply enough juice to keep that ramp smooth at the top. If I go even further out, get that. Now I'm going to go out. This knob here adjusts the pulse width of the PWM. And that increases the amount of time it's on. You see you get more noise at the top because the, the capacitors not being big enough. So that's basically it. And it's working. And I've got a fairly clean looking ramp on this board, better than what I was able to do when I just soldered it with perf board. So we're gonna dial it back. I ripped apart my QCW coil right here. It looks like quite a mess of wires, but I ripped it apart to try and add this board to it. Okay, here's the test setup. I have the uh, ramp generator. I have a variac that's connected to an isolation transformer. The scope, um, the low voltage electronics is plugged in. And that's actually connected to a grounded connection. And um, we're gonna test it any minute. I've got a lot of extra wire here, so tuning isn't optimal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, use 110 volts. Well, it looks like it's working pretty decent. There's still a bit of noise in the ramp, as you can see there, but I'm gonna push this up to 220 plus volts and see how it does. Thanks for watching, folks, and I hope this video helps you in building your coil.